Hello, here is your daily dose. Today we're going to be doing Tony the Tiger on TriHackMe. So task one is just getting connected. Task two, if you just read through this material, you'll know the answers. So we're gonna start with task three. So it says your first reaction to being presented with an instance should be information gathering. It asks what service is running on port 8080. Uh, and it asks, what is the name of the front end application running on 8080? So if I wanted to find that out, I would just do nmap-a-p and then do port 8080, and then I would do the IP address. Uh, I have already run this scan, and for the rest of the machine, you'll need to have run a, a scan on the entire thing. So just go ahead and do a dash a dash p dash. And then to speed it up, you can do dash T4 and then your IP address. And then if you want to output to a file, you can do dash O and then you could name it whatever you want to name it. Uh, you can, for example, file.txt. So I already have the scan in here. It's called nmaptony.txt. So I'm just gonna cat that out. When your scan finishes, you'll get something like this. And it was asking about port 8080 which is down here. So it's asking what service? Apache Tomcat, uh, Coyote JSP Engine 1.1 is the answer. It was also asking what the front end application is. And if you look down here, it says, welcome to JBoss AS, uh, JBoss service down here. So JBoss is our answer. Now it asks us to find Tony's flag so this one you have to go on a little bit of a hunt. But this is a walkthrough, so I'm just gonna direct you over towards where you'd find the answer. So if you go to Frosted Flakes and read more, you'll find this photo. So if you right click and save this image as, I've already done it, uh, it'll get saved as this be2s file dot jpeg. Now if you do strings on that file, you're gonna find the answer. What strings does is it looks for any ASCII or any human readable uh, text that it can pull from the file. So it's gonna pull it out and you can see Adobe's in here and just this random garble of characters. Uh, but if you did see on the bottom there, that is where the flag is. So now we go to exploit. So now it asks you to download this zip file and to read up on this vulnerability here. And once you've obtained a shell, uh, it, then you can continue. So to get our shell, uh, first of all, if you download this jboss.zip, if you don't know, you just do unzip and then jboss.zip, and that's going to uh, extract the zip file for you and it's going to come out just like how you, you see it on my screen here, this, uh, this JBoss. So if you CD into there, you'll see we have credits.txt, exploit.py, and this jar file. I had already said in here that the credits.txt uh, is just to uh, respect the authors, to give them credit. So this exploit.py is the one that we're interested in. Now, Whenever I see an exploit, whether this be something like in this situation where uh, where we're given the exploit or it's something that I just pulled from online, say I was doing a different machine completely blind uh, and I found an exploit online, what you want to do is get a look at what the exploit is actually doing. So I'm going to use nano here just to read the code and see if I can get an idea of what's going on here. And if you look through here, uh, it's looking for these arguments. So we're looking for a target uh, and a command to run. So it looks like it's just going to run a command as we launch this exploit on the remote machine. So do chmod plus x on exploit.py. And this just means that we can execute it. And you'll run uh, python exploit.py. And then remember we wanted the target, which is gonna be this IP. 
and then it wanted a command. So I'm just going to say ls, because I don't know what this exploit is going to do yet. So it says target must be in format IP port. Alright, so our port was 8080. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Alright, so mine tripped up a little bit there. I had to run it a second time, but you should have this command executed successfully. So we don't see any output on this, but it does say that the command executed successfully. So I'm guessing on that machine, this command should have run. What that means is we can probably get it to talk back to us. So to do that, I'm just going to run netcat, nvlp, and then I'm just going to run this on port 4444. And then on here, we just need a command to run to get the remote machine to talk back to us to connect to us on port 4444. So to do that, I'm just going to do netcat, and then you want your uh, try hack me machine IP. Uh, just go ifconfig, and it should be this ton zero address. So I'm just going to copy mine. And then we wanted port 4444. And now we need it to uh, run bin bash for us, or just a bash shell. So I'm going to say uh, dash e for execute and then bin bash. So let's fire that off and see if we get our shell back. So it says command executed successfully, and sure enough, we have a shell. So if we ls, we can see that we do have a shell here for who am I. We are this cmnatic user. So if you uh, are familiar with uh, netcat with getting these reverse shells, you'll know that we want something called TTY. Uh, this right here is just my cheat sheet. I'll have a link to it in the description. It's just on GitHub. Uh, this command right here is just going to input, I'm sorry, uh, it's going to import a TTY shell for us, and you'll see what that means. So now we have a more standard looking shell here. So now for on who am I? we're the same user. Alright, so we have obtained a shell and we just have to find JBoss's flag here. So, you can see here it looks like we're in the top level folder. So let's just go into home, ls in here, and we have JBoss. Let's cd into JBoss. And let's look around. We have this note. So we have a password right here. It says, following your email, I have tried to replicate the issues, blah, blah, blah. I almost forgot. I have reset your password as requested. This is not the most realistic thing, but it, this is something that you'll find on Try Hack Me and CTF type machines. So it looks like uh, for JBoss, we do have a password for him. So we're going to do SU for switch user into JBoss. And we're just going to paste that password in. And we are JBoss. So we still need his, uh, his flag. So if you do an ls-la here, the dash la is going to show you the hidden files, the ones that start with a dot or a period. And we have jboss.txt. And if you cat jboss.txt, whoops, cat dot jboss.txt then you'll find the flag so next it says escalation so boot to root expectations apply here so all we want is uh, to root this machine so if we look at what pseudo privileges we have yeah, sudo l you'll see uh, everyone can run without a password this user bin find so I'm going to go out to GTFO bins. And look at this find command. We do have a binary here. If you're not familiar with GTFO bins, uh, it looks for things such as this, ways that you could get a shell. And if you have pseudo privileges to run this, 
then that means you can get a pseudo shell or a root shell. So let's take a look and see how that works. So we're just going to copy this because we uh, we have a pseudo vulnerability here. We ran sudo l and we can see that we can run this as sudo without a password. So let's go ahead and paste it and see if we can get a shell here. It looks like we did, so if we run who am I? We are root. So now if we go into uh, the root folder, we have root.txt. So if we cat that out, this is not our flag. They're trying to pull a fast one on us. Uh, this looks like it is encoded, and if it, if you go back to here, it says get cracking. Anytime that you see these two equal signs at the end, that signifies that it's probably base 64. So I'm just gonna say decode base 64. And this base64decode.org, it's one that I've used quite a bit. And if we run it through here, we get this. Now if we take this and submit it, that's not right. So this is still a hash that we need to crack. So I'm just gonna say identify hash. Uh, this tunnelsup.com is a pretty decent hash identifier. Just paste that in there. And we say it's an MD5 or an MD4 hash. That's useful if we're going to do this the hashcat way. I'll show you uh, a simpler way first. If you just go to crackstation.net, this is a very useful site. It's not good if you have very complex passwords or um, really that's just it. If you have obscure passwords, very long passwords, this isn't gonna find it. It's just going to find the common ones. And this does crack our hash for us. So if we come back here, that is our uh, hack, I'm sorry, our cracked hash. Now, if you wanted to do it the hashcat route, I'll show you here. This is on my Windows machine. You'd run hashcat. Uh, for me, it's 64 because I'm running a 64-bit machine. It's 2020. You should be too. And it said it was an MD5 or an MD4 hash. So I'm going to say dash zero. Uh, I already have the hash saved in a file called hash2.txt. And then you need to put the extension after that. So I have to do dash text.txt. And then I have rocky saved in the same folder. So if you run this, uh, you can see it says that I already did it. Uh, but if you have this running here, uh, it will eventually give you uh, this hash. All right, that is it for Tony the Tiger. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something, and I will see you next time.